In one of my videos, I talk about how you can use your inverter on stabilizer without any effect. It seems a lot of people are still confused about what I said in that video. So I decided to do this uh, little demonstration with this diagram on the board so that everybody will understand what I was talking about. So first I drew my inverter, then I drew this one to represent the house, and here we have the stabilizer. So I was actually talking about how you can use your stabilizer from the grid to your inverter before it now, you know, supply the house. So a lot of people are still confused. I see people asking questions like, can I use a uh, stabilizer on my AC even when I'm using it on inverter? After this thing, I'll answer your question and, you know, clarify everything that have been disturbing you after watching that video. We all know that the work of an inverter is to convert direct current into an alternating current. That's the work of an inverter. And it also collects, you know, uh, power from the grid to charge your battery at the same time. But there is one thing that the inverter does not do, which is to collect uh, uh, current or collect voltage from uh, the grid and step it up. Inverter doesn't do that. So here is what you need to understand. Here we have the grid, which represents the Nepal light. Here we have our stabilizer, and here we have our inverter. For those of you that stay in Nigeria, you know, we use, uh, our grid is always called Nepal. And let me say Nepal so that everybody will understand what I'm talking about. You know, normally before the, 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 the grid supply your house, it goes through cut out fuse and, you know, ELCB, some of the stuff like that before coming to your house. So I don't need to draw all those. So this is a little diagram to demonstrate what I was saying about you using your inverter on stabilizer. You don't need stabilizer at the output of your inverter. That is one. Because, because if your inverter does the, uh, the conversion of direct current into alternating current, the output is always stable. It will give you stable output of 220 volt, which you don't need stabilizer at the output of your inverter. Whether you use AC, whether you use uh, your pumping machine, your whatever, as long as it's from the output of your inverter, you don't need the stabilizer. The place you need stabilizer is at the input of your inverter. If you observe very well, the grid comes first to the stabilizer. Then from the stabilizer, there is an output that comes to the input of uh, the inverter. From the grid to the stabilizer to the inverter. That is the idea. Why? Because grid, which is Nepalite, fluctuates. Most Nepalites or most grid uh, power which you get in Nigeria always fluctuate between 90 volts to you know, 360 volts. And the idea of inverter is that the, the stuff that does the auto changing here is a relay. And all relay do is to bypass whatever is coming from the grid and allow the inverter to be resting, then bypass whatever is coming from the grid and give it to the house. So if your inverter collects 90 volts, it will give out the same 90 volts, which is garbage in, garbage out when it comes to your grid passing through the inverter. Because your inverter doesn't have a stabilizer or have a step up ability. So that is why you need stabilizer at the input. So from your grid to your stabilizer, your stabilizer will now step up whatever it receives from the grid to 220 volt, which it will now give to your inverter. As long as there is stabilizer here, you don't need stabilizer at the output of your inverter. But if you don't have stabilizer, that means you connect your uh, inverter direct to the grid without uh, stabilizer. It means if your inverter received 90 volts or if Nepal bring 90 volts, your inverter will give out the same 90 volts. But at times, some inverter will not even peak. They will not bypass this voltage. They will still be consuming from the battery. Some inverter peak when the voltage is around maybe 120 or 150. That's when they peak and start working. And that is why you need stabilizer. Because if that light keeps fluctuating between 130 and 150, it will be, you know, uh, you'll be hearing uh, the relay clicking, trying to bypass between the inverter output and the grid output. So you need a stabilizer here to stable whatever is coming from the grid. If you observe from the grid, it comes to the stabilizer as input. Then from the stabilizer, it, go, it goes out as output. The output to inverter input. That's why you see I wrote grid here, input, which is grid. So this is your uh, inverter input. From your stabilizer is output to your inverter it becomes input so your inverter receives from the stabilizer and give out 220 volt as long as the stabilizer is giving out 220 volt your inverter whenever it does the bypass it will give you the same 220 volt but if your stabilizer is giving 120 volt output your inverter to give the same 120 volt output because inverter doesn't have step up ability but you don't need stabilizer at the output of your inverter so what I was trying to say earlier that most of you don't understand is that you can use stabilizer at the input because 
the stabilizer will protect your inverter from you know so much surge from the grid or from the nepa light but at the output you don't need stabilizer to your house because everything that will now come from the output of the inverter will be stable as long as you know there is a conversion of direct current into alternating current but if, if there is no stabilizer here and you connect your inverter direct to the grid if your grid is grid is receiving 90 volt uh, sorry if your stabilizer is receiving sorry if your inverter is receiving 90 volt it will give out the same 90 volt no magic about that so this is why you need your stabilizer not here you need it at the input of your inverter not at the output of the inverter so anything you want to use here you don't need stabilizer your inverter produce stable output which is to 20 volts